You know, what's interesting about, by the way, about the word Hamas is that the reason why God destroyed the world in the days of Noah, it says God saw and there was Hamas violence in the earth. Unbelievable, right? It's like, it's like what Yeshua said, as it was in the days of Noah, there was violence, there was Hamas on the earth, and now there is Hamas in the land again. This is no coincidence. Wanting to pray again this evening for what God is, what in the world is going on in Israel. It has been obviously very serious very significant situation. This is a moment in time where we need to come together and we need to rally together in prayer for what's going on in Eretz Israel, in the land of Israel, in the conflict that's happening here at the moment. This has been tragic. This has been uh, traumatic. The news in many ways, as far as the casualties is getting worse, not better. There is about 700 to 1,000 Israelis and other visitors that were murdered, that were massacred, as many of you know, in a very uh, barbaric way when militants from Gaza breached the security wall and fence. It was a coordinated attack sponsored by Iran. This is being called Israel's 9-11 and kind of a Pearl Harbor since it was a sneak attack. When you look at the actual number of casualties, 700 to 1,000, that's like 25 to 30,000 people when you compare it to when you compare it in population size to what happened on 9/11 so for Israel this is very significant you know there are unfortunately there's a narrative going on in the media that is saying that what these Hamas militants and others that joined with them that somehow that this was justified that they were defending themselves, that they were responding to the fact that peace talks have broke down and this is the result of that. They're confronting their occupiers, calling Israel a colonial, imperialistic uh, sort of state. Friends, this is simply not true. This is simply not the facts. I want to be honest with you. My heart breaks for the Israelis that have lost their lives, for the parents that are crying and for their children that have been taken. But I also, my heart breaks for the everyday Palestinian in Gaza, who I believe in many ways have been taken hostage and have been lied to. I believe that the uh, Palestinian movement for freedom has been hijacked by extremist militant Islam that are puppets of Iran whose desire is to destroy Israel. And it's heartbreaking to me because Israel really does want peace, but it's hard to make peace when you've got people that won't recognize your existence and who are bent on your destruction. And so, yes, there is real suffering among the Palestinians, and we should never minimize their suffering. It is real. It is significant. It is tragic, the conditions that they live in. But I just want to be honest, that is not Israel's fault. The world will try and make it Israel's fault, but it is not Israel's fault. It's not primarily Israel's fault because Israel would like peace. And I think we're going to pray in a minute, but I do believe one of the things that we have to really pray against is Yeshua said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. And what breaks my heart in this situation is the degree of hatred that is being perpetrated, right? There is no justification 
for attacking women and children and the elderly and massacring them in the streets of their community and going into their homes intentionally. But even worse than that, celebrating it, rejoicing over it. I, I couldn't, I was in shock as I saw pictures of Israeli children being beat up and bullied by Palestinian children, probably be, being encouraged by these terrorists. Unbelievable. Who would have their children do something like that to other children? But this is really exposing and showing the world who they truly are, what they're truly about. And we need to wake up and understand this reality. And again, the reason why I'm saying we need to know the truth and the truth will set you free is because there was so, there was so much hurt on both sides, but on the Palestinian side, on the on, in Gaza side, there's hurt that has led to hatred. But that, but we have to understand, hate is rooted in fear, and fear is fed by lives, lies. So there's all these lies that are being told about Israel, about what they want to do to the Palestinians who the Jews are. I mean, did you go online and just see what is being taught in the schools? And here's a challenge. The lies are feeding the fear and the fear is feeding, feeding the hate. And don't get me wrong, that has happened in the hearts of some Israelis as well. And we need to pray at this moment in time against the fear, against the lies, against the hate, so that Truth and love can prevail because this is such an important moment. And so I also want to encourage you to speak the truth to your friends on social media because the narrative that's being propagated out there that Israel deserves this, that Israel intentionally tried, you know, they've attacked and killed innocent people. Listen, what can Israel do when they've got these militants funded by Iran shooting missiles at them, doing all sorts of terrorist acts like you've seen, and then using innocent people as human shields? So it's a no-win situation, and that's exactly what these evil individuals in Hamas and Islamic Jihad and all these groups, it is demonic. It is from the pit and we need to call it. I know it sounds strong, but we need to call it and speak about what it is. It is a culture of death, not a culture of life. It is the exact opposite of everything the Bible stands for. Every promise. I can't believe some of the things that are written on our social media as we're praying and speaking these things out. Absolutely incredible. So Let's just stand for the truth. Let's be ambassadors. Let's do it in love. Let's speak truth to power and let, let's help people know that Israel has not started one war that they have in its history. Every war that has been started in the history of Israel, not one was started by Israel. 1948, War of Independence, United Nations offered the Arabs in the land, their own state. They could have had their own state right from the very beginning. And they said, no, we're going to drive Israel into the sea. We're going to wipe the Jewish people out. And that has been the case in every single war. Israel has been willing to give land for peace. They gave land to the Egyptians for peace. So we have seen Israel is willing to make concessions and compromises for peace, but yet what do they get in return? They get attacked, they get terrorized, and all sorts of craziness. I can't believe some of the things that I heard spoken at the United Nations, unbelievable. So I just had to say that, get that off my chest. With that being said, listen, God loves Israel. He has promises for the Jewish people but he also has promises for the sons of Ishmael. 
And God wants to reconcile and unite the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Isaac. But this can honestly only happen in Messiah ultimately. You know, what's interesting about, by the way, about the word Hamas is that the reason why God destroyed the world in the days of Noah, it says God saw and there was Hamas violence in the earth. Unbelievable, right? It's like it's like what Yeshua said, as it was in the days of Noah, there was violence. There was Hamas on the earth. And now there is Hamas in the land again. This is no coincidence. This is no coincidence. But let's just take a moment and pray. Abba Father, we pray for the restoration and the reconciliation of the sons, the B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel, and the B'nai Yishmael and the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Israel, that there should be reconciliation and understanding We know that the enemy is a liar and he is spreading lies and he is stirring up hatred and he is stirring up fear. But you are the God of truth. You are the author of life. Bruksha and Marv, Hayah Olam, you are the one who spoke and the world came to be. You are Melech, you are king. All the plans of the enemy will come to naught. All the plans of Iran and of Islamic terrorists are going to come to nothing. We thank you, Abba, that you are Adonai Tzvaot. You are the Lord of the hosts of the armies of heaven. And we pray that you would dispatch the hosts of the armies of heaven, your angelic army, just like you did in past situations and circumstances, just like the reports of the angels that appeared at the War of Independence. And in other words, we pray, God, for divine intervention, for angelic armies to be mobilized, to come against what not is only happening in the natural, but the attack in the spiritual, even as Daniel, the angels were hindered from coming to Daniel, the prince of Persia, God, the prince of Persia, that spirit is alive today. And we ask, Abba, that you would come against it in the name of Yeshua. We pray, God, for the hostages We pray, God, for the hostages right now that are fearful for their lives, that are being abused, that are being tortured, that are being uh, that are experiencing trauma, that are not sure if they're going to live. We're asking that you would appear to them, that you would be with them in a very real, in a very special way. We ask, God, that you would show up and reveal yourself to them and give them your shalom. Give them your shalom, Abba. We pray, God, Baruch Atah Adonai Elohenu Melech Alam, Zokef Kefufim. We just want to thank you, God, Matir Asarim, that you are the you you release the confined, you release those that are bent over and those that are being beaten down. And we ask God for that here. We pray for the families that don't know where their loved ones are, that don't know if they're ever going to see them. And again, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami. Comfort, oh, comfort my people. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort those that are taken captive, comfort their families, comfort the nation of Israel. We pray for the Roshel Hawk, the Hikalut, the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. We pray for a prophetic spirit to be released to the leaders of Israel that they would know how to respond, that even supernaturally would know or be led somehow to where these captives are, that they would not be held for years, that they would not be pawns in a greater political scheme or drama. We pray, God, for their freedom. We pray especially for the women and children now in the name of Yeshua. We pray, God, for a speedy end to this conflict. We ask, God, for a quick end because we know, God, that the longer it goes on, the more people are going to, more innocent Palestinians are going to be hurt, more innocent Israelis are going to be hurt. So we're praying, God, for this conflict to come to an end quickly. We pray, God, for just to show how they can uh, respond in a way that brings it to an end as soon as possible. 
We pray, God, for world opinion, that world leaders would understand the truth of what is going on and they would stand with Israel. We pray that the United States would stand strong with Israel. We pray against God, uh, Hezbollah in the north from entering into this conflict. We pray, God, against an escalation with Iran that could lead to a greater regional conflict. We know that the enemy wants to disrupt the Abraham Accords and the potential uh, peace treaty with Saudi Arabia in Morocco, and some of the other Arab nations. We pray, God, that this would not be hindered by that, that Iran would not win, that they would get no benefit out of it. So we pray against a broader conflict as well as a speedy resolution to the current crisis. We pray against the propaganda that is being spread right now. We pray for an awakening among followers of Messiah We pray against those, God, that have bought in to the lies that are being told in the universities. We pray against the propaganda that Israel is an oppressive nation. This is not true. We pray against the new anti-Semitism, which is an anti-Zionism. We just want to pray, God, that you are, you are the Ozer, you are the helper, be an ever-present help in the time of trouble. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run to it and be saved as the mountains are around Jerusalem. So the Lord is around his people. We pray that you would be around Israel right now, that you would be a ring of fire around her. We pray that you would be a, you would be that ring of fire, that you would be that divine uh, protector of her. And we pray, God, that this conflict in the midst of the heartbreak, that there would be a spiritual comfort, that there would be a spiritual awakening, that you would pour out your Ruach, a spirit of grace and supplication upon the nation of Israel. Now, in the name of Yeshua, we pray for unity. We pray for Achtut. We pray for unity among the the governmental leaders in Israel, among the among the political parties. We pray for leaders among the right and the left and the religious and the secular. A house divided cannot stand. So we pray Israel would not be divided, but they would be united. And we pray that those who believe in the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that we would rise up and stand together and join arm and come into agreement. Yes, Bo Ruach Elohim, come Holy Spirit now in the name of Yeshua. We say, We're asking God that you would send a healing from heaven in the name of Yeshua for those several thousand Israelis that have been wounded as a result of this even for the innocent Palestinians that have been wounded as a result of this. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. We pray that you would put the Yirat Hashem, that you would put the fear of God in the Palestinian terrorist. We pray, God, just like you caused the people of old, the giants of old, the peoples of old who wanted to fight against Israel, that you caused their hearts to melt like wax. We pray, God, that you would put a fear that comes from heaven in their hearts and they would realize that what they are doing is futile, that they cannot win, that the God of Israel will not be defeated. He who sits in the heaven laughs. The nations take their stand against the Lord and against his anointed one, but they will not prevail. But we pray, God, Lord, would you bless and keep Israel? Would you lift up your face towards Israel? Would you be gracious to her? And would you give her your shalom? We're asking for your peace. We're asking God for nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. We just want to thank you for taking uh, the time to join us. Friends, we believe it's important 
to just continue in prayer. The reality is, is that there is not a lot of information about what actually is happening on the ground. Those who say they have it really don't have it. You can just listen to the Israeli media, even the parents who can't find their loved ones, who can't find their children. They don't even know exactly what's going on. And so there, there needs to be concerted prayer, concerted declarations, intercession. As we said, as you all know, this is 5784 on the Hebrew calendar. 84 is the number of times the word palal, the Hebrew word for prayer, occurs in the Hebrew scriptures. So this is a year to pray. This is the decade of the mouth, the decade of the pay. Just like God spoke the world in existence, this is the time to use our mouth to enter into spiritual warfare, to enter into intercession. And I just bless all of you right now in the name of Yeshua. God says he will bless those who bless Israel, even as it says, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So again, let's pray for a speedy end of the conflict. Let's pray for a de-escalation so that it doesn't uh, broaden out into a wider, larger conflict in the region. Let's pray especially for the hostages and the families, for those that were injured in these battles. Let's pray for protection over innocent Palestinians, those that are caught up in this, that have no choice. There's nowhere for them to be able to go. And let's just understand the truth. Again, I'll just say this one thing, and that is there is this narrative that, um, that Israel has, is that, that those in Gaza are, in a sense, um, refugees. Friends, they are not refugees. Israel has not, con not controlled Gaza. Those that were in Gaza were never removed from their homes. Okay, it's just simply when it comes to Gaza, not the case, but they consider themselves refugees. They, they don't want to build for their future. I should say the leaders don't want to build for the future. Those that are in control, this is an extremist government in there who also oftentimes terrorize their own people. And again, watch the videos, watch what they're doing to innocent Israelis. And let's just stay steadfast. God is looking for watchmen to stand on his wall at this time of season. So let's stand. Let's pray. Let's not remain silent when people speak all manners of lies and evils against Israel. And I just bless all of you now for your hearts to love Israel, for your hearts to stand with Israel. And let's believe that even what the enemy has meant for evil, somehow, some way, God will bring some sort of, of redempted redemption out of this. So we just bless you all in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. And let's just believe that God is going to do a miracle. We bless you all. Shalom, shalom.